O foolish Galatians, O foolish evangelicals, my name is Larry Jones and I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul was frustrated with the beloved Galatians because they turned from the gospel of Christ that he preached to them years previous and shifted their loyalty to religion. Turning from Christ to religion is something Christians did way back then and regularly do today. Paul wrote to the Galatians, You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? The Galatians were doing well, as are every Christian when first born of the Spirit of God and every Christian who remains true to Christ Jesus. The evangelical also did well before he became an evangelical. It could be said to these pre-evangelical converts, you ran well. Someone hindered the Galatians, and now they were not doing well. Paul asked them, who hindered you? Paul knew the answer to his own question. It was religionists who convinced the Galatians that they must keep the law of Moses. Evangelicals do not obey the law of Moses, which actually consisted of hundreds of regulations. The one exception is tithing. Tithing is too lucrative for the controllers to not apply that rule onto their fellow evangelicals. However, evangelicals have embraced what could be called evangelical laws. Question, who is more foolish? the Galatians who compromised their faithfulness to Christ for the law of Moses, or the evangelical who, right at this moment, are compromising Christ by keeping evangelical laws. First, the evangelical must be fully aware that there is a set of evangelical regulations that they do follow. These rules are seldom written, simply because they cannot be defended by Scripture. The rules are in effect nonetheless. I will list some evangelical regulations that, though unrecorded, are common to many evangelical assemblies. Are you ready for this? One, address pastor whoever as pastor. This practice is peculiar to evangelicalism. Two, tithe your income. Three, do not be led directly by the Holy Spirit, but rather submit to the leadership of pastor whoever. Four, do not preach. Of course, pastor whoever would not dare vocally decree such a rule, but nonetheless, the suggestion, though subtle, is real. They say, leave the preaching to us. What else could explain that pew people, generally speaking, do not preach. Five, be a team player. What you do, you do only or mostly as a team player under the supervision of the local church. Six, do not have gatherings in your home that are spiritual in nature without the consent of pastor whoever. Seven, it is your responsibility to finance the building and or maintenance of your church building. Eight, help finance the pastor's salary. Nine, the pulpit is prohibited except for those appointed by their denomination. Ten, Christ's great commission is secondary to church concerns. This includes the pastor's salary. Eleven, evangelicals must finance the salaries, offices, traveling expenses, etc. of regional and national denominational headquarters. Twelve, Care for, those in the congreg care for those in the congregation has priority over the needs of friends and neighbors. Thirteen, never express concerns about the many discrepancies between evangelicalism and the New Testament. Fourteen, more than half of evangelicalism teach do not ever speak in tongues, as did Paul and many other New Testament saints. Fifteen, do not attend several churches, but be faithful to the one church, considering this one church your home church. 16. Do not challenge leadership on matters of doctrine. 17. 
do not have your own personal communion service or a family communion service. This does not come across verbally, but rather by insinuation. 18. The pastor baptizes any convert you bring to church. 19. The pastor dedicates infants, not the parents. 20. Attend church every Sunday. If out of town, find another church to attend. And on and on. Have I established the fact that there is a set of evangelical regulations? Good. Now let's return to the question. Who is more foolish? The Galatian who compromised his faithfulness to Christ by embracing the law of Moses? Or the evangelical who compromises his faithfulness to Christ by embracing evangelical laws? In defense of the Galatians, their religion, the Mosaic law, originated from God. Paul states, the law is holy. Evangelicals can make no such claim. Every one of their regulation was initiated, was initiated by man, including the evangelical version of tithing. But the evangelical could argue, the Galatian brothers succumbed to circumcision. They actually had their foreskins hacked off. We evangelicals have never done that. True, that must have stung for a week or longer, but the Galatians never tied their income. Many evangelicals have been succumbing to this evangelical law for decades. It does seem today's evangelicals are at least equally foolish as yesterday's Galatians. Paul writes, the New Living Translation, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Paul's words are also a challenge to evangelicals. O oh, foolish evangelicals, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. The words of Galatians chapter 3, verse 3 are equally applicable to both yesterday's Galatians and today's evangelicals. How foolish can you be? After starting your Christian lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfected by your own human effort? The Galatians would probably deny they were trying to perfect themselves by being circumcised and, and adhering to the entire Mosaic law. But you couldn't fool Paul. He knew they were wanting to please God by their works, by their religious practices. Works for the purpose of pleasing or impressing God are unacceptable to God. Only faith in Christ is acceptable. The blood of the Lamb is the Father's way. His slain Son is his provided salvation, both for the unsaved and the saved who have been saved from the punishment of sin and now need to be saved from the destructive effects of sin. Evangelicals would deny their religious observances are means of pleasing and impressing God. But if that were so, why do they do it? Why do they adhere to rules they know have no biblical foundation? Why feed their religion with their tenth? Why title and salary the few? Why aren't they preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified? I'm not the only person who sees the folly and waste and tyranny of religion. A.W. Tozer, a well-respected mid-20th century pastor and author, who I quote often, wrote this. The simple liberty of early Christianity is being lost to us. The right to obey the Holy Spirit. The right to think our own thoughts. Our own private thoughts. The right to do what we will with our lives. The right to determine under God what we shall do with our money. God bless you.